Нам не зашкодить чарка вина, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, нам не зашкодить чарочка вина, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, нам не зашкодить чарочка вина. Чарка вина, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, Гей! нам не зашкодить чарочка вина, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна, Гей! нам не зашкодить чарочка вина, нам не зашкодить чарка вина, будьмо здорові, пимо до дна. And Picardiska Teretsia from Ukraine opening our show for this evening with a song that's very apropos for June, seeing as it is the month of weddings. And that song was Vasilne Marsh, The Wedding March. Dobry večer, šanovni radio suhači, ta vitaju vas vsih na radio predaču naš holos radio Krinskoho Korinja. Katera podijesje vam jak svečajno šča sobote, šosti hodeni na bahatomovni radio stanci AM 1320 CHMB u misti Vancouveri i pomereži PCJ Radio Mižnarodnomu. Pri mikrofoni Pavlina Makori, djakuju što rišale prebute zimnoju na stupnu hodenu. Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on AM 1320 CHMB Vancouver and in international syndication on PCJ Radio International. I'm Paula demchuk mccory Pukadinska Pavlina, and I'm delighted to have you with me. We've got a great program lined up for you. We've dug into the Nash Holos audio archives and we've got a few blasts from the past for you, uh, a few stories, book reviews, and things like that. As well, we've also got our usual proverb of the week, other items of interest, and great Ukrainian music. So stay tuned for all of that. Coming up next, we have a group from Winnipeg called Siege and a song called Back to the Siege, the Zaporozhian Siege, the Cossack headquarters. Oh, 
kneel down and pray The headsman must lead them to war on this day From the left and the right We'll pull the forces in We'll defend our precious steps Till the end We'll go back, go back To the siege To the siege Oh, of the Cossacks We'll go back, go back To the siege To the siege In the heart of Ukraine National Ukrainian Festival returns to Dauphin, Manitoba, August long weekend. Get your weekend passes in advance right now. If you wait, you'll pay more at the gate. The on-site attractions, grandstand variety shows, and hourly ongoing entertainment on four feature stages are all included in your one-pay admission. No extra fees. Day passes and camping passes are also available. Order your tickets and get more information at cnuf.ca. Thanks to the foresight and generosity of its donors, the Taras Shevchenko Foundation has been investing in the future of the Ukrainian-Canadian community for over 50 years. Since 1963, the Taras Shevchenko Foundation has been funding initiatives that strengthen our Ukrainian-Canadian identity and enhance our Ukrainian-Canadian cultural heritage. These include fine and performing arts and arts groups, museums, cultural centers, education, as well as authors, journalists, and the Ukrainian-Canadian media, including this program. The Foundation strives to become the premier not-for-profit foundation in a Canada which acknowledges the Ukrainian-Canadian community as a fundamental component of Canadian society. Nash Hollis listeners are encouraged to support this vision through continued donations into the future. To apply for grants, make a donation, or for more information, visit ShochenkoFoundation.com. Vegreville, Alberta, there's a giant peasant cup. It's the biggest Easter egg that anybody ever saw. The question folks up there won't answer even if you beg. Where the heck's the chicken that laid that giant egg? Giants of the prairies rising in the sky. Giants of the prairies designed to catch your eye. They may not be the sort of thing you fancy or you dig, but one look at it and you'll admit that thing is really big. Camarno, Manitoba, they built a big Kumar. It's a really big mosquito, you could see it from afar. Now you may find it strange, a little weird, a bit absurd, till you realize... A mosquito is Manitoba's provincial bird. It's 
Saskatchewan's Kenora, there's a lady mighty fine. She's holding bread and salt, a Ukrainian welcome sign. They thought that giant lady would bring their town some class. Till some tourist park has been a big old underneath her skirt. Giants of the prairies rising in the sky. Giants of the prairies, you just can't pass them by. You could hear the lonely trucker calling from his rig saying, Take a look, that thing is really big. They pay homage to our food They don't call it a veranic But some people think they should Now I really must admit I felt a little like a dork When they took my picture under a big pierogi on a fork Pierogi Vilna, they've got some giant shrooms Even if you dried them, they'd fill many, many rooms Now if you want my opinion, I think you'd need a tanker To truck in enough cream to make a sauce for those be pancakes Giants of the prairies, rising in the sky Giants of the prairies, now as the years roll by In the future, archaeologist, working on a dig My show, Eureka, look at what we found This thing is really big In the town of Andrew, they've got a giant duck. They had to rent a crane to lift that mallard off the truck. Now it hasn't generated the reaction they were hoping. The tourists mostly stop and yell, Night the bad guys got quashed Giants man. of the prairies rising in the sky. Giants of the prairies, oh me, oh me, oh my. Now I know folks who just don't care a feather or a fig. But even they have got to say, That thing ah, is really big. big. Under Alberta, there's a new totemic sign for Ukrainian sausage lovers. It's like a sacred shrine. We bow down low before it. We gaze at it in awe. It's a 14 meter fiberglass. Kubasa! Giants of the prairies rising in the sky. Giants of the prairies, you've got to wonder why. You think by now the audience we're playing for at this gig would all catch on and sing along? That thing is really big. big. You think by now the audience we're playing to at this gig would all catch on and sing along? That, that thing is really big. big. Giants of the prairies rising in the sky. Giants of the prairies, let's raise a glass of rye and congratulate the audience we're playing for at this gig. Cause they all got on and sang along the big Giants of the prairies shining in the sun. Giants of the prairies, I've gotta build me one. A mosquito or a mushroom, a pierogi or an egg. It's a way to leave my mark just like a dog lifting his leg. Giants of the And if you plan on traveling, uh, taking a road trip through Western Canada, just a little list there of a few of the sites that you just may see. That was the Kubasonics with Giants of the Prairies. Up next, another group from Edmonton, and this group is called Millennia. Here they are now with a country, Ukrainian country rocker called Kumea Godfathers. <laughs> Yeah. 
Then, my name is Serhii Kaznadi in Toronto, Canada, and I am pleased to narrate Victor's vignettes, stories about life in Soviet and post-Soviet Ukraine. These stories were written by Viktor Sergeyev, who lives in Mykolaiv, Ukraine. Viktor worked as freelance technical translator from English, but now has multiple sclerosis, which makes speaking difficult for him. But he finds great joy and a creative outlet in writing and sharing his stories online and here on Nazholos Ukrainian Roots Radio. You can find Victor's original transcripts along with his commentary at his blog, Vignettes, Life in Ukraine. Links and audio files at nazholos.com. Compulsory Steps, Growing Up Soviet Today, I will share with you the typical Soviet childhood, based on my own life experience. In Soviet times, children went through a very rigid process of indoctrination. There were three compulsory steps required of each child in order to grow into a proper Soviet citizen. Children began their studies at the age of seven. The first step was to be admitted to a program called Oktobriata, and become known as one of the so-called October children. The name comes from October, the month in which the Bolshevik Revolution took place. The Ukrainian name for October is Zhovtyn. It is derived from the word for gold, the color that leaves begin to turn in this month. To my mind, Zhovtyn is a much prettier and more descriptive name. However, Russian was the lingua franca of the Soviet Union, and speaking other ethnic languages, especially Ukrainian, was frowned upon. In some cases, it was actually dangerous. At the beginning of Oktobriata, we were all presented with a little badge, a red star with a picture of a blonde little boy in the center of it, none other than Vladimir Lenin, founder of the Soviet Union. Even then, at such a young age, the program struck me as odd, surreal, like some kind of silly childish game. But it was a game the authorities took very seriously. And it was only the beginning of a lifetime of such surreal games. I will never forget 
This propaganda nursery rhyme from my kindergarten days. Я маленькая девочка, играю и пою. Я Ленина не видела, но я его люблю. That was, of course, in Russian. There was no Ukrainian version. Crucification was in full force. The English translation goes like this. I am a little girl, playing and singing. I haven't seen Lenin, but I love him. Our teachers at school constantly drilled into us, you must always write the word communist with a capital letter and the word God with a small letter. What an ironic ideological paradox. Did they see it too? By the age of ten, and provided we studied well, we were admitted to the young pioneers. In the early 1920s, the Soviet regime created a pioneer organization modeled on the Western Boy Scouts organization, with the addition, of course, of stringent communist ideology. At this step, we were presented with a red necktie, called a Pionierski Galstuk, and another badge called Pionierski Znachok. On my blog, you can see a picture with all the three badges along with my original transcript. For the next four years, we were happy and proud to be part of the Young Pioneers. Apart from the communist indoctrination, it was a fun time, just as I imagine it was for boy and girl scouts in the West. However, our necktie gave away our age. At the age of 14, every teenager wants to look older. So once we left the school grounds, we would hide the necktie. At 16, we were admitted to Komsomol, the youth division of the Communist Party. In actual fact, every teenager in the USSR from the age of 14 automatically became a Komsomol member. Only those who studied poorly or were sent to juvenile prisons did not. Children of very religious parents were also excluded. But we had to pretend we were making a conscious and enthusiastic decision to join Komsomol or not. What a decision it was. Did we want access to officially sponsored holidays? Did we want to pursue higher education? Did we want to get a good job, perhaps one with the privilege of going on business trips? As children, we were well aware that there were no tourist trips at all even to socialist countries, for any child whose parents were not high-ranking Communist Party officials. So, did we want to live without even the small pleasures, as few and far between as they were, that came with the Communist Party membership? Well, of course, I joined Komsomol. I wanted the best life possible in that wretched system. Now I pray those days never return, and my daughter and her contemporaries will never have to endure the lunacy and absurdity the previous generation did. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Victor's Vignettes, stories from the life of Viktor Sergeyev in Mykolaiv, Ukraine. You can find Viktor's original transcripts and commentary at his blog, Vignettes, Life in Ukraine. For audio archives and links, visit www.nashholos.com So until next time, do pobaczenia! Люби мої діти, мила мамо і тату, я йду на війноньку нашу землю захищати. Не плачте за мною, Якщо в полі згину, все вітам за любоненьку нашу Україну. Єдинаємося, браття, з великого дину. Нехай ворог знає, ми за Україну. Богу душу нашу віддамо єдину за нашу. Ну, Україну, Богу душу нашу, віддамо єдину 
lleno la, 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 la. Ukrainian group called Shabla Life and Bracha Ukrainsi, Ukrainian Brothers. Up next, a song with a title that is very fitting for our time of fake news, Mikola Budnik with Nemovsviti Pravda, There is no truth in the world. <laughs> This is CHMB, AM 1320, Vancouver. Моя <laughs> 
Від вроди дівочої рвуться труси Та не ведуть у оману діла На мене чекає моя мала Та нитки роздягнуть, не лишать гроша Як глянеть журналіний холода над душа Моделів гламурених так доля зберегла На мене чекає моя мала І клубів неон, що крок то спокуса, та Богу хвала, на мене чекає моя мала. And from an addition to the Nash Holos Music Library that came to us from our good friend and my colleague Roman Schwed from Kiev, that was Antin Mucharski with Moya Mala. Up next, high profile from Winnipeg, and if you don't didn't have your dancing boots off on for that last tune, better get them on now because you will need them for this up on the hill, Kozachok. <laughs> Zip 
Пробрались Вони того комарика поховали, вони того комарика поховали, поховали край дороги, але того комарика видно ноги, але того комарика видно ноги. This is Irena Bell, producer and host of the Ukrainian Hour on Chin Radio in Ottawa with a Did You Know Chisnalevi segment and special greetings to the listeners of Nash Holos. Did you know that Prince Wilhelm von Habsburg, an Austrian aristocrat, aspired to become king of Ukraine? Prince Wilhelm von Habsburg learned Ukrainian and became known as Vasil Vishivani because he took to wearing a Ukrainian embroidered shirt under his officer's uniform. He was involved in Ukraine's efforts at independence after World War I. In the end, he was captured by the Red Army, tortured and died in a Kiev prison in 1948. The fascinating story of Wilhelm von Habsburg or Vasil Vishivani, is told in a recently published book by Timothy Snyder, professor at Yale University. The book is entitled The Red Prince, The Secret Lives of a Habsburg Archduke. You can buy the book in local bookstores or borrow it from your local public library. Many thanks to Irena Bell of the Ukrainian radio program in Ottawa for sharing Chisnalave, Did You Know, with Nasholus listeners. You can catch her show at www.chinradioottawa.com. Hey, you lose the Chervona Kalina, Pohililasia. Чогось наша славна Україна зажурилася, а ми тую червону калину підіймемо, а ми нашу славну Україну гей-гей розвеселимо. 
Welcome to Knishka Corner, book reviews by Myra Junik, Ukrainian stories in English. In this edition of Knishka Corner, we will be discussing Timothy Snyder's The Red Prince, The Secret Lives of a Habsburg Archduke. Who can resist a romantic Habsburg hero who openly embraces the cause of Ukrainian nationalism in the early 20th century? Wilhelm von Habsburg was such a man. Although he died in obscurity in a Russian prison in 1948, Wilhelm made the creation of a Ukrainian nation the cause of his life. As the son of Archduke Stefan and Archduchess Maria Theresia, Wilhelm led a very privileged life along with his five brothers and sisters. At the time, their family still ruled the Habsburg monarchy, Europe's proudest and oldest realm, stretching from the mountains of Ukraine in the north to the warm water of the Adriatic Sea in the south. Wilhelm's parents had castles on a peninsula called Istria on the Adriatic Sea and in Poland. His father believed that Poland would eventually become a separate entity and would need a Habsburg king. He hoped to be that king. During his time at military school in Moravia, Wilhelm became interested in the idea of a Ukrainian state. Perhaps he could eventually rule Ukraine for the Habsburg monarchy. In 1914, Crown Prince Franz Ferdinand, the Habsburg heir, was assassinated in Sarajevo. World War I followed. Service during wartime was the destiny of Habsburg archdukes. In June 1915, Wilhelm received command of a platoon in a mostly Ukrainian regiment. He soon became one of them. By speaking Ukrainian, wearing an embroidered shirt under his uniform, and calling himself Basil. His soldiers nicknamed him the Red Prince because of his support of the Ukrainian peasantry. Eventually, Wilhelm became the diplomatic representative of the Habsburgs in Ukraine. He met several prominent Ukrainians, including Metropolitan Andriy Sheptetsky and Hetman Skoropatsky. At the end of the war, the empire had fallen apart, and the Habsburgs had to give up power. Wilhelm's dream of a Ukrainian nation did not survive. After World War I, Wilhelm was at loose ends. His resources were slim after the fall of the Habsburgs, so he was constantly searching for new sources of income. He promoted various unsuccessful schemes such as making Ukraine a promised land for European Jews. He left Vienna for Spain to visit his Habsburg relative, King Alfonso. He later moved to Paris, where he continued to promote the Ukrainian cause and live a playboy lifestyle, characterized by excessive drinking, homosexuality, and reckless spending. Forced to flee Paris for Vienna after a conviction for fraud in 1935, Wilhelm watched the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party. How would Wilhelm adapt to this new reality? Timothy Snyder weaves in wonderful anecdotes about the Habsburg dynasty into his comprehensive examination of the life of the Red Prince. He does not shy away from the controversial aspects of Wilhelm's life, his homosexuality, his drinking, his scheming, and his short-lived anti-Semitism during the early days of Hitler. Readers will be surprised by Wilhelm's role as a promoter of the Ukrainian nation at a time when such a concept was considered remote at best. 
it is truly fitting that Snyder concludes his book with an examination of the independent Ukraine, which Wilhelm helped to build. It should also be noted that this book was written in 2008. Snyder's praise of Ukraine is ironic. Simply by existing for almost two decades within unchanged boundaries, Ukraine has already proven more durable than most of its predecessors. Who could have imagined that Ukraine's territory of Crimea would be invaded in 2014 by Russia? Timothy Snyder received his doctorate from the University of Oxford in 1997. Before joining the Department of History at Yale in 2001, he studied in Paris, Vienna, and Warsaw. Snyder has written articles for the New York Review of Books, The Nation, The New York Times, and the International Herald Tribune. His award-winning books include Bloodlands, Europe Between Hitler and Stalin, Ukrainian History, Russian Politics, European Futures, and Black Earth, The Holocaust as History and Warning. In 2015, Snyder received the Andrew Carnegie Fellowship as well as the Havel Foundation Prize. He is a member of the Committee on Conscience of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum as well as the Advisory Council of the YIVO Institute for Jewish Research. The Red Prince is available at Chapters Indigo and Amazon. Thanks, Myra. Join us again soon for another edition of Kanishka Corner, book reviews by Myra Junik, here on Nasholos Ukrainian Roots Radio. And a patriotic Ukrainian song called Zasvistele Kozachinke, performed by the Slavyanska Choir. Up next, Vasil Hantarsky with Chorinahora.
Black Mountain. Listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, our flagship show in Vancouver, which comes to you Saturdays from 6 to 7 p.m. right here on AM 1320 CHMB on the radio dial and online at am1320.com and in international syndication on PCJ Radio International. In between broadcasts, please visit our website for transcripts and audio files as well as the podcast link and that is www.nashholos.com. Nezhame vshizkin chela nashu programu vshichastu domu vizkazati do pabachenya, ale peritem ya hochu zalashe to vas tekime slovame mudrostia. Kto spivaya, toi i zhurbu zabuvaya. And our proverb of the week translates as sing and you will forget your troubles. That's always very good advice. And we certainly endorse that message here on Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio. Well, our time is almost up, so to wrap things up, we have one last great toe-tapper for you by the Ukrainian connection, uh, Kolomeka. I'm Pavlina on behalf of all of us here at Nash Holos and AM 1320. Thanks for listening, and Dobranich! <laughs>